Yeah. This is legit how cringy this has become that we have this logo. But I guess it's fine because everyone knows my stance on the anime man anyways. So Dislike Brigade, I'm waiting for you here. The video in particular that we're looking at today is called Response to a Former Fan. The Anime Man Should Be Deleted from YouTube. In which he responds to a person who used to be a fan of his. That means that this... This just keeps getting better. How's going everyone? This is the Anime Man. Constructive criticism is so important to a creator of any field. If you're an artist, a writer, a musician, and yes, even a YouTuber. Receiving constructive criticism is the best way to self-reflect on your actions and improve upon your art. During the almost five years I've been talking bullshit on the internet, I've received a lot of messages and tweets and emails from you lovely motherfuckers about what you like about me and my content, what you dislike about me and my content, what I can change about my content to make it better or worse. All sorts of different constructive criticism. Alright then, great. Let's go ahead and I'll give you some constructive criticisms then. Since you're so fond of them, I mean I know I am, here, let's not use jump cuts because those are fucking annoying. Let's not use hashtags because those are fucking annoying too. I mean, the only reason that you should use them is if you're, you know, like on Twitter because that that's where they ultimately have all the power. I mean, using those on Facebook, I mean, what are those, right? I mean, it's just completely useless. I mean, also your videos, I, I, why, why is this video 20 minutes long? I mean, is everything that you have to say 20 minutes long to one person? I mean, to be fair, I mean, I guess... My videos are kind of like, you know, like an hour to respond to you, but that's because I have to take your video and use it, but that, whatever, I'm moving on. And I really take that into consideration because I think it's something that's really important for me, but especially for you guys who watch my stuff and follow me on whatever I do on the internet. You see, the problem here, Joey, is that constructive criticism doesn't ultimately matter to the person who's receiving it if they never apply it. So for you, who never takes any of those constructive criticisms to heart, you never seem to improve, or you never seem to self-reflect, as you call it. I mean, those are things that you should take into consideration, and people that do follow you tell you that they would like to see your videos this certain way. People tell me all the times that they like to see more art, more expressions. Those are things that I can't really control because I don't... I just don't have enough money, but when I get more money, I like to commission the artist so that way I can get more expressions. But it's something that I can't truly help at this point, but I want to do more in the future. But for everything else, I mean, you can do all that. I mean, you make literally bank off of YouTube. This should be no problem for you to get your editors or even if you're a one-man operation to have yourself just take some time and figure this out. The reason why I decided to start entire series like What the Fuck Japan and Japanese 101. The reason why I started writing scripts for my rants instead of just going off the top of the dome. The reason why I started to cut and edit my videos in certain ways. The reason why I changed my mind about certain manga, certain anime, certain light novels, certain aspects of the anime industry and community. It's all thanks to you lovely motherfuckers who were so open to me about your opinions. Having an intellectual conversation with me and other people in this community through my comments or on social media and carefully constructing criticisms towards me for the better. Well, Anime Man or Joey or whatever you want to call yourself now these days, I, I, I assume it's the Anime Man because that's what the logo at the beginning was. You don't take constructive criticisms because you usually delete everything from your Twitter, especially when it came to the Flying Colors Foundation and Things of that nature that you just didn't want to discuss and you never made a video about it. The only person to date that made a video was Digibro. And he was one of the six influencers. But that's a, that's a different video. You can watch that later. But even then, people told you that and you never took it into consideration. And also, please, just don't call me a lovely motherfucker. Because I'm definitely not lovely and I'm not a motherfucker. I mean, I, I guess I could be. Maybe? And the amount of gratitude I have towards any people who have taken the time to do and say shit like that for me is immeasurably large. And the strong reason why I'm still fucking here talking to you guys on YouTube is pretty much thanks to you guys. So I tip my invisible fedora hat to you, motherfuckers, and thanks for being open about your opinions towards me and my shit. Wow, whatever could we do to ruin this perfect moment for you? 
While I say all of that though, I also can't stress enough about the fine line between constructive criticism and hate comments. Ah, that, that was it. That was the thing that could ruin it. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Look, I'm totally okay with you telling me what you don't like about me and my content. As long as you give me a justifiable reason as to why you think that, and give me suggestions on how I can get rid of any negativity you have towards me. Joey, let me introduce you to the internet. It is literally a place full of millions, if not billions and trillions of people. And on the internet, people can be whatever they want to be. The internet is a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and it has no regard for your feelings. People will literally spam you with hate messages or whatever you want to call them and hate comments and hate emails and hate tweets and everything. Constructive criticisms aside, they don't care about your feelings. No one does. In fact, I get hate comments every single day just about. If you Have you ever seen my Neo Yokio video? That's what I'll send to you directly. My Neo Yokio video, I'll tweet it to you right after I finish this video. And I want you to look at how many people called me racist in that video. Do you know what I did? I responded to them in a very polite manner and I just moved along. Do you think I cared about them calling me racist? No, I didn't because you know why? It doesn't matter. Words only have the power that you give them. If someone wants to wake up and call me a racist or they say that I'm a fucking moron, that's fine. I mean, I get called it all the time. I just move on and make another video or I come on Discord and I play games or whatever it is I do. Because I'm not sure if I'm the only one who thinks like this, but constructive criticism with no justifiable reasoning is just a hate comment. It's the difference between saying, I hate you in your videos because I don't like you, so fuck your videos too. And actually saying something useful like, I'm not a huge fan of the way you do this in that manner, so maybe if you change it up like this so that it becomes like this, then it might be better for everybody. Well, Joey, that's not really how the internet works. I mean, you can't really just pick and choose what comments you want left on your videos. If people want to hate on you, then whatever, just move past it. But if they want to leave constructive criticism, then that's completely up to them. That's not for you to dictate or judge. You see the difference here? I can't completely stop people from hating me or my content because obviously nobody's perfect. Especially in the anime community, am I right? But if you just write in the comments saying something like, I hate you, then what do you expect me to do with that information? You didn't tell me why you hate me or how I can stop you from hating me. It's comments like that that I read on a Sunday morning and make myself feel shitty and useless while also making you look like a prick. To be honest, Joey, that seems like it's more of a self-esteem issue than a people issue. If you don't like those comments, then either don't read them or you need to get some thicker skin. The internet isn't for people with thin skin, and if you have a problem with it, then I don't think that this is the place for you. And it wasn't until I received this one particular email from this uh, former fan of mine. Sorry for the long intro, we're finally getting into the meat of things now. Haha, <laughs> he said the meat. That's... That is today's gay joke in this video. I hope you guys are proud of that. That I realize just how difficult it is to write a proper piece of constructive criticism. Because I'm sure this person spent a large amount of time trying to put together all of their thoughts and opinions and reasonings as to why they dislike me and are no longer a fan of my stuff. But as I read this email all the way to the end, I just started laughing at how fucking stupid it was. So Joey, I have a couple of questions for you. Is the email that you got stupid because it was something that a former fan made? Or was it stupid because they're not intellectually on your same level? I mean, I guess we'll find out because you're going to break it all down in this 21 minute video that you've provided to us. So today we're going to go through the contents of that email and uh, look at it together to see what the hell is wrong with it. I'm sure there's not a lot, but I'm pretty sure that it's from the internet, so it may have a lot of issues, but let's find out. But before we move on, just an important note as to why I'm making this video. For starters, I want to properly defend myself for all the unfair accusations this person is just fucking throwing at me. I also want you guys watching this to use this email that I'm about to show and this video as an example on how to write proper constructive criticism. Think of this video as the unofficial Anime Man constructive criticism course for dummies. Wait, so I'm supposed to take a crash course on how to make 
proper constructive criticism from a man who is literally upset that someone sent him a strongly worded email, whether it be real or not, because we still can't validate if this is real or not. And I think that this is a pretty straw manned argument that you've made for yourself just to make another video. But how in the world are you making this about constructive criticism when they gave their own reasons? I don't understand this, Joey, but let the video continue so that way I have something more to cry about and be wrong about. I want people to send me stuff with the intentions of this email, but just a lot more well thought out and not retarded. But overall, I just think this email is way too hilarious not to share. So let's go. Joey, we need to talk. I used to like you. Emphasis on used to. You were even the person that introduced me to the Monogatari series, a series that I love to this day. But that's as much credit as I'll give you. I mean, hey, I got him into the Monogatari series. That's a win on my behalf. I'll take it. I'm writing you so that I hope you realize that you and your content are a danger to impressionable young anime fans who may think they need to act like you to be real anime fans. Okay, hold on. Let's just... Let's just stop right there. Class, put your hand up if you have ever heard me say that I am the embodiment of a real anime fan, or that you have to be like me in order to be accepted as a real anime fan. Well, while you didn't actually say a real anime fan, I'm gonna go ahead and take a step further and go back to your older videos, because I'm an asshole, and that's what I do, where you did make a couple of different points talking about how it is to be Japanese like you are and also call out a bunch of different people for being weeaboos or liking things like dubbed anime and things of that nature because you have to be really high up on your pedestal, at least for when you started out three years ago. Since anime has made its worldwide debut, the amount of otakus devouring our internet space has increased dramatically, which is good for long-time otakus like myself and others alike. But everywhere you go, you always have to be careful the fake motherfuckers out there. Boy, if you thought that new Joey was a wreck, just look at old Joey. I mean, these videos are atrocious, and it's not even because of the awful, like, just audio quality. It's like, just everything that he says in these videos. They're just, uh, oh, oh boy, let's just get to the next part of this. Even though they may say they're a genuine otaku on the space of the internet, they may just be another fake otaku, or as I like to call them, fotakus, because Cool like that. Oh my god, that shit-eating grin. Look, otakus are just people that like anime, or people that are interested in Japanese culture that are from another country that's not in Japan, right? Or, I mean, they can even be from Japan. Otaku is not really like a, a badge of honor, I would say, but it's something that, you know, signifies that someone likes something from Japan, mainly anime and manga, but... There's no reason that they have to be called fake. I mean, just because they only like a certain show. Just because I don't like all the mainstream anime like One Piece and Naruto and Dragon Ball Z doesn't make me like an anime elitist. I just don't like those shows because, I mean, they just don't really contribute anything to me personally. But for people that only watch those shows or only watch one show, that doesn't make them fake. But I'm sure you're going to outline all of that in this next part. Aren't you, Joey? So today, I'm going to teach you some of the characteristics that make a fake otaku, and the ways that you can spot a fake otaku around you. Now, some otakus out there do a really great job of covering up their fake otakuness, and so, to the untrained eye, you may not be able to tell the difference between an actual otaku and a fake otaku. But let me just say this. I know a fake otaku when I f***ing see one. You what, mate? I can spot a fake otaku quicker than a fat cosplayer at a convention. That's fat shaming. And after this video, you will too. So listen up. Number one, lack of knowledge. With any such kind of hobby like anime, the more you know, the more of an expert you become. In this case, the more anime you've watched, the more of an otaku you are. That's right. The more drugs you take, the more of an expert you become. Oh, wait. that That's right. The, the more drugs you take, the more dead you are because you die of an overdose. That's right. <sighs> Sorry, we forgot about that part, didn't we, Joey? Simple. But I gotta make it clear that watching One Piece, Naruto, and two episodes of Full Metal Alchemist does not make you an otaku. Well, no, not exactly. I mean, it makes them a casual watcher, but that's probably about it. But even if they want to be labeled an otaku, then sure, because they're just now getting into the very birth of what anime watching is. 
Maybe those are the shows that they were recommended to start watching anime and that's what they wanted to watch. Don't be such an asshole, Joey. Now, I'm not trying to bash anyone that's only seen that amount. I mean, everybody starts off like that, so did I. But what I can't stand is these sons of bitches who act like they know everything about anime, like they've been watching it since they were a fetus. Just remember, Fotakus, it's really easy to tell if you haven't watched a particular series or not. So don't even pretend to know what you're talking about, because clearly you don't. Ah, so the straw manning begins really early then. So this is where we get to the deep-rooted cause of everything, because you just make up these imaginary people that like to say that they know them. But let's just assume that you're not strawmanning this. That just makes those people assholes. Number two, immediate appraisal. If you jump onto a forum site or a blog site after watching an anime that you've just finished and say stuff like, Oh my god, High School DD is so good. This, the Boo Festival is the best ever. Oh my god, R15 was so funny. The characters are so brilliant. Oh my god, Sword Art Online is a masterpiece. 11 out of 10. Best anime ever. Then you, my man slash woman, are a certified Fotaku. Immediate appraisal isn't something that just happens after a show ends and then someone watches it. Especially in the case of Sword Art Online, I mean, people love that shit. And then when it came out, and then the further seasons came out, it started to dwindle off, as though it just never even existed, because the show's terrible. At least to some people, I mean, I mean, other, like other people, they just absolutely love that shit, I, I don't understand. But now that Gun Gale Online is out, I mean, people really like it, because there's no Kirito in it, because... It's, he's just, he's overpowered. He's just, that's not what people want. They don't want him to be like God tier at everything that he does because that takes away from the story. Come on guys, get it together. He's fucking terrible. I get it. When you finish an anime, it seems like the best thing ever, but only for a couple of hours later. Trust me, you'll look back at these comments years later and double face palm yourself. Unless it was genuinely the best anime ever. Ah, uh, yes, that wonderful show called School Days. You remember the one that's on my anime list, and if you look at it closely, you can tell that it has a really good score of 6.03 because everyone loved it. You remember, it's that super fan favorite that didn't have that plot twist ending. You know, the one that everyone talks about to this day. Number three, The Denial. Are you sure we're not talking about the stages of depression? Now this is the most common type of otaku. I'm talking about those genuine otakus who watch heaps and heaps of anime and love to brag about how much anime they've watched over the internet, but when you meet them in person and ask them, Oh, you watch anime? And they reply by saying, Oh, uh, oh, oh, um, yeah, j j just a little bit, you know, I I'm not, you know, I haven't seen that many, you know, like, like, I'm not a nerd or anything, you know, I've only seen, like, three or four series, you know, <laughs> like, it's not that much, you know, I'm not that much of an otaku. When they've seen Yosuga no Sora about 15 times back to back. I hate it when people deny their otakuness just because they're looked down by society. I mean, I've been called things like nerd, dork, a loser, shithead, asshat, corporate shill, a mongoloid. You probably fat to hentai, but that has never stopped me from saying that I love anime and that I am an otaku because... I am. If you're a genuine otaku, then be proud of your otakuness and don't let anybody tell you shit. Sticks and stones may break our bones, but words will probably kill you if it's written in a death note. First of all, Joey, that awful, awful death note fucking reference, it kills me. Secondly, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't be afraid to be an otaku, but you also have to, you know, not be a complete fucking piece of shit in society. You shouldn't run around with your body pillow in public while tipping your fedora, you fucking weirdo. And that's all, guys. Now, there are probably a lot more characteristics that I've missed out on. So, if you know any more characteristics that make a fake otaku, then leave them in the comments below. And tell me if you know a fotaku around you, or you've seen them on the internet space. And remember, if any of these characteristics fit into you, then you are a fucking fake otaku. Wow, it's almost like this video didn't age well at all. In fact, you had to put up a disclaimer right when this video happened, so that way you didn't get any blowback because of how fucking retarded it sounded. Please don't take this video seriously. There are some points I make in this video that I do not necessarily agree with at the current time. If I happen to offend anybody in this video, then I did not mean to, and I apologize deeply. But seriously, people are so anal about this topic, it's ridiculous. 
I know it's kind of ironic, but I can say now that this video is stupid. But that's the point. It's supposed to be stupid because it's a stupid topic to argue over in the first place. Oh, you slick devil. You know how to just cop out of everything, don't you? I can't see the show of hands, considering this is a pre-recorded YouTube video, but I'm assuming the only person who has their hand up is the person who sent this email. And me, the person who made this video because I like torturing myself. If anything, I'd like to think that I encourage young anime fans to have both sides of the argument always present when talking about something. And I can honestly say that compared to some other anitubers that exist on this website, I'd like to think that I'm pretty passive with the arguments that I do present in my videos. Oh, you mean like Yuri on Ice? Oh, oh wait a minute, that's, that's a video that you don't want to talk about, is it? If you're talking about my more satire-based videos, like stuff with Vegeta Review 69 in it, where I'm a little bit more rude and crude with my arguments, then I'm sorry, but it's not my fault that you don't understand my satire and shitty jokes. As much as you may think that I am an authority in the anime community, which is absurd on its own, I'm still allowed to joke and make fun of anime like everybody else. I realize you may think of me as a troll or weeaboo when writing this, but I don't care. My voice needs to be heard above the trash that call people weeaboos and tell people how to act. Oh, don't worry, buddy. Your voice is going to be heard. In fact, it's going to be heard by a lot more people than what you initially thought. Almost like all of those comments that people left on your videos talking about the Flying Colors Foundation. That one is a two for two today. I am on a roll. I don't care. Put that one in the books. You lost this one again. First of all, I cannot believe you are still on YouTube. A channel like yours that caters to the most elitist, this is how anime should be mouth breathers, should have been purged in the adpocalypse, or at least been reported off YouTube. First of all, my channel did get purged by the adpocalypse, like every channel on YouTube. Second of all, what reason do I have to be reported off YouTube? Is it because I use anime clips in certain videos? Because I'm sure every other Anituber does that. Is it because I occasionally discuss sensitive topics that exist in the anime community in my videos? Because compared to my videos, there are way more sensitive issues that are discussed online. Or is it perhaps because you have a personal problem with me and it's nothing more than your individual interest to see me reported off YouTube? One of the first comments I ever got was when I had had 127 subscribers and a man named Frozen Kex said that no one would ever watch my videos and that my channel would never grow. But now I'm sitting here with 1200 subscribers plus and I'm more than happy to see every single one of them every day, especially the ones that are in my Discord and on Twitter. And I couldn't be more happy than to have just more people come. And I've had a lot of big names stop by like Unique Name Asaurus who made the video on why you should pirate anime. I mean, people tell me all the time how I'm retarded. There's nothing I can do about it. But I'm happy that they stopped by because, I mean, a view is a view. But it doesn't do anything for my bottom line because I don't get paid from it. So maybe you could learn a thing or two. And thirdly, and, and this is the point I don't understand. You say that my channel caters to uh, the most elitist, this is how anime should be mouth breathers. Where did you get that assumption? Because I can tell you right now that most of these elitist mouth breathers you speak of most likely fucking hate my videos. <laughs> Those very same elitist mouth breathers accuse me for catering to the normies of the community, whatever the fuck that means. It doesn't matter who you cater to, I mean, as long as you make content that everyone can enjoy, but sometimes you do exclude some of the normies from a lot of your videos by either speaking in Japanese and, I mean, sure, you put subtitles there, but some, some of the more casual people, they'd like to, you know, not have to listen to you in Japanese. You know, they like to be able to, you know, just watch you in English. Wink, wink. Of course, I'm not saying that elitists 100% don't exist in my audience. But to presume that everybody who supports me consists of only those kinds of people is a pretty absurd claim. But if you thought that accusation was absurd, <laughs> We're only just getting started, my boy. And worse still, you use your fame to worm your way into the actual anime industry. You go as far to even voice a character in Pop Team Epic and collab with one of the few pure things left on YouTube, Kizuna Ai, lessening my faith in both of you. Your influence spreads like a cancer and continues to grow until the anime community as a whole is as diseased as you and your actions. So I know you're going to bring this up in the next part of this video, Joey, but... I think what this person is getting at is that you're pretty much out there in this anime community and that you get a lot of different offers coming your way. Now, 
people such as myself don't like it when other YouTubers collab with other people that they don't like. Like I most certainly won't watch a video with another YouTuber in it that I just don't personally care for. Like I just won't watch that video. But I'll usually stay, you know, subscribed to them or I'll watch their rest of their videos. It's just a thing that I do. But if it becomes more of a regular habit or more than one video, then it starts to get a little bit sketchy. It's just me and my personality. So this person may be the same way if this is really even a person in this alleged email. But I mean, for all intents and purposes, we'll just assume that this person is real and that you're not strawmanning this entire situation. So I guess what they're trying to get at is they're just kind of upset that you're getting these opportunities, which I guess is more of an envious type of thing and they shouldn't be this way. But go ahead and share your side of the story because you're going to outline all of that for us. You have to understand, my dude, that I didn't go to the producers of Pop Team Epic and fucking beg on my knees to let me voice one character in one episode. I didn't stick a gun to Kizuna Ai's head to force her to let me collab with her on her own channel. Both of these opportunities, and basically every other opportunity that I've had directly involved with the anime industry, all came to me and not the other way around. And I just decided to accept those offers that came to me because why wouldn't I do something cool involving the stuff that I love and have passion for. Because you were nothing more than a low-life corporate shill. Didn't you know that already, Joey? On a serious note, I also think it's very important to separate entities here. Losing faith in Kizna Ai entirely, all because we did a collab video together, is a pretty petty reason to hate somebody. If you like Kizna Ai, or rather any YouTuber that I have ever collabed with, then you can still continue to like and watch their videos just don't watch the ones that have me in it. My face is in the goddamn thumbnail, so it's pretty easy to avoid me altogether. Don't worry, I manage to avoid you every single day because, I mean, YouTube is literally a vacuum where I can watch any content that I desire. Nobody's forcing you to watch these videos. If you don't like me, then don't watch the videos with me in it. Pretty simple. It sounds like common sense, but I keep forgetting that common sense is an obsolete idea on the internet. Like informing your fans that the scam that they signed up for that has their IP addresses and takes their cookies. You know, it's almost like I keep beating this dead horse, but I just don't really know. My root problem with you is that you are constantly, constantly telling people how to be in the anime community. A sign of an elitist, a narcissist, and an all-around jerk. And hey, if anyone likes me stands up to you, just call them a weeaboo or irrational, pathetic, a child's actions. Well, to be fair, I mean, you did make a 21-minute video about an email that you received, so props to him for pointing that one out. I don't want to constantly remind you that every opinion-based stance I take on my channel is, you know, opinions. But I think you truly fail to understand the intentions I have in my videos. I merely give my opinions on what I think about certain things, but I never tell people to blindly agree with me. Stating a mere opinion and brainwashing an entire idea are two very different things. Also, you accuse me of calling out anyone who I think is irrational, but you certainly nailed that on the head by being irrational as fuck in your arguments. I don't know if this person is a weeaboo themselves or they truly don't understand what a weeaboo is, but just keep that in mind as I read this next paragraph. Oh boy, don't say what I think you're gonna say, Joey. You are telling people to accept one another for our opinions, but as soon as anyone is seen as a weeaboo in your eyes, you loose your shit and make a video about them, pressuring people with similar mannerisms to change their ways only because they make high and mighty assholes like you uncomfortable. Man, the guy that wrote this email sure knows you a lot, Joey. I mean, you did make a 21 minute video and you're proving his point by just, may like just being uncomfortable about this entire thing. Even if you don't want to admit it, it does have you sitting here making a 21 minute video. Nope. I call out weeaboos because they're fucking weeaboos. And I call out corporate shills because they're fucking asshole corporate shills. Weeaboo is a non-Japanese person who basically denounces their own culture and calls themselves Japanese. Keep in mind that a non-Japanese person can like the culture, watch anime, speak the language, and respect the culture while still keeping in touch with their own. Weeaboos basically disrespect the culture and make complete asses of themselves. That's a strange definition you have there, Joey. It's much different than the one that you have in this other video where you explain what a weeaboo is. 
Now, many of you may not know what the word weeaboo means. You may have heard of the word, but you may not know what the actual definition of the word is. So let me give you a perfect definition that I found of the word weeaboo from the always accurate UrbanDictionary.com. A weeaboo is someone who is obsessed with Japanese slash Japanese culture slash anime, etc., and attempts to act as if they were Japanese, even though they're far from it. They use Japanese words but usually end up pronouncing them wrong and sounding like total assholes. You can find a lot of these faggots clogging up the forums of Gaia Online, hanging out in the international aisle of the supermarket, or crowding the manga section of your local bookstore. Similar terms that aren't as popular as weeaboo include Wapanese and Japanophile. Pretty much, I want to be Japanese. Ah, yes, that was the definition I was looking looking for. Hopefully you remember it too, but even if you don't, then good thing the internet remembers for us and we have this wonderful video here, which I'll put a link to so that way you can remember it again. Since you say that you're a former fan of mine, then you should know that Japan is my home. I have family here. Like, I literally have Japanese blood running through my body. Yes, Joey, and you also have Australian blood. Let's not forget that one detail that you keep seemingly forgetting about. It's one of those things that you just neglect to bring up, probably, because you're ashamed of it or you just don't care to ever mention how Australian you are. So tell me this, what kind of person wouldn't get upset at someone who is disrespecting their own culture? You seem to clearly misunderstand what a weeaboo actually is, but I don't blame you because the definition of weeaboo has just been slaughtered by the internet over time. For someone like you, I recommend my video, What Exactly Is A Weeaboo? If you're gonna stop watching my videos, then at least educate yourself before you leave, all right? Oh boy, more education with Joey, AKA the Anime Man. So you want us to educate ourselves by learning about what a weeaboo is from a weeaboo. Uh, or actually, in your case, it's an otaku because, you know, because you're actually Japanese, I forgot, because that's all you ever talk about. If people want to act like asshats, then let them do that in public. Then they'll just be frowned upon not only in Japan, but they'll be frowned upon in America too. I mean, it's a two-way street here. If they're acting like fucking morons and they're running around with body pillows and they're trying to act like they're from the glorious nation of Japan, then yeah, they're going to get made fun of and then they won't be attractive to anybody except for their own kind. I mean, isn't it best to just let that one be what it is? I mean, you don't see me making a video about how fucking bad weebs are. I mean, just let it be, Joey. Let it be. Okay, this next part just makes my brain explode from all the logic. I want you to realize that the more passionate a person is in the anime community, the better. People who are casual or only in it to call people out who aren't exactly like you, sound familiar, are part of the cancer that you spread. It divides us into those who are labeled as weeaboos for liking a thing, and the casuals who only watch the basics and spread misinformation and horror stories. You are the ones who spread anime's bad name, not the weeaboos you speak of, and make up for views on the internet. Oh man, guys, how will we ever recover from this, I wonder? I'm sorry. What the fuck did you just say? Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you really just accuse me for pertaining to the elitist mouth breathers, only to then, two paragraphs later, accuse me of pertaining to the casuals who are responsible for spreading this cancer in the anime community? So... Am I an elitist or casual. Now this, Joey, is what makes me believe that this is something that's made up here. This is something that makes me believe that this is a straw man email. Because, I mean, you do act like an elitist, but you do cater to a lot of the casuals in the industry, or at least in the community, and how you pertain to a lot of the things that they want to see. And despite what you may believe, you and Logan Paul are like the same people. You happen to make videos or vlogs and you cater to a younger demographic of people and they're a part of your association. Your videos, even looking at just this picture, are all vlogs and they're usually about mainstream anime series, even ones that you shell out for. Not necessarily the one about the anime awards, which are pretty terrible in their in their own right. I mean, who's obviously watching that? I mean, I'm not ever going to watch a fucking awards show for anime, but... Even just this other stuff that's on normie level weeb shit. I mean, we've all seen those memes around the internet. You're just pretty much banking on other people watching it, which are for the casuals that don't get around or are just, I don't know what the word is, not smart enough to go looking on their own. 
you bring that to the table, which I guess is a plus for you. I mean, you do try to be a voice to everybody in the anime community, or at least in Japan, which is why you made that video about Logan Paul's Suicide Forest video, which you said to get out of your country. I don't think that you speak for everybody in Japan, but I'm pretty sure that they were more pissed off at you than they were to him when you made that video. But that's why I say that sometimes you can be an authoritative figure and you just don't realize it. I'm not an authoritative figure because, like, obviously I'm a shit poster on the internet. That's just what I do. People hate my videos and you'll never be able to stop people from hating you on the internet. It's just a thing that you will not be able to control. I don't know how else to tell you this, Joey. The internet is a dog-eat-dog place, and if you're not strong enough to handle it, then I think that this isn't the place for you. Like, guys, I'm not being an asshole here. Like, I'm, I'm genuinely confused. This person literally just accused me of being a casual and an elitist, and for me, leading the casuals and the elitists who are both bad for the community, but not at the same time because they're against each other. <laughs> What do you want, my dude? He's probably not on anything, Joey, because this email's probably made up and it's fictional. Wow. Also, can I just point out how much I fucking hate the word misinformation when it comes to this community? What misinformation are you talking about? Are you talking about the opinions on anime that you disagree with? Or are you talking about the crazy fan bases that get way too defensive about their favorite series? Well, if this person were real, I think they would probably be referring to the misinformation about like the Flying Colors Foundation or any of the other experiences that you might have had or talking to ducks, even though they weren't ducks in your latest vlogs because, you know, those are things. Or, you know, the fact that you delete comments referring to the Flying Colors Foundation because multiple Twitter users have reported it and it's something that you've been doing, dodging the question completely that they've been asking. So, yeah, I would probably label those under misinformation, also being disingenuous. Those are things that I would label, yeah. How am I supposed to listen and take in your arguments when I can't fucking understand them at a fundamental level? This is like trying to fucking decipher the Zodiac Killer's letter, my dude. Like, I, I need some more context clues, please. Plus, you say that weeaboos aren't the ones who spread anime's bad name, but, uh, how do I say this subtly? Uh, you're wrong. These are the very same people who not only disrespect Japan and the Japanese culture, but also give this false image of the anime community to those who are outside of it as being full of these disrespectful, cringy assholes. When many of us in the community know that that is only a small handful of us that the rest of us are trying to convert. Also, contrary to your argument, I haven't done that many videos on calling out weeaboos or whatever you accuse me of. Because if I made a video every time I spotted a weeaboo on the internet, my channel would be a fucking leafy clone at this point. You're not too far from the mark at this point. You might as well go ahead and just lace up those boots and start go ahead and making more 21 minute videos talking about how people hurt your fee-fees on the internet. So what if someone likes not thinking too deeply about anime and actually enjoying it instead of hyper-analyzing it like you, Digibro, Geekuk, and so many others? Yo, God, if you're watching this, I'm sorry for laughing, bro. But even you have to admit, that Gikuk is hilarious. <laughs> Can you please change the name of your second channel to Gikuk? Okay, love you. So what if someone's expressive about anime and makes the jerks uncomfortable? They're jerks. They deserve discomfort, at least, for constantly putting us down as not valuable and cringy just because we like a thing. In fact, I plan on showing you all how disgusting you are by putting you casuals, elitists, trolls, and just horrible people in a cringe compilation of your own to see how you like it and see how you feel about getting called cringy. Maybe you can understand us real otaku for even a second. Here, I'll solve the video's problems for you right here. This entire email is fake, and you're both troll lords, and you're both terrible people. That should be the end of it, right? I mean, you shell out for money at every chance that you're ever given, and the person writing this email is probably no greater than a middle school, like, just language barrier. I mean, they, they obviously can't spell disgusting right properly. And this is probably a fake email that you had like some child, right? I just feel like this is just not even real. I feel like this is all an illusion and you're just leading us on this fucking wild goose chase to make us mad at a person that doesn't even exist. So you can make a 21 minute video to scrounge around for any little bit of change. So that way Google will make you get more money. 
Oh, it all makes sense now. They're not an elitist. They're not a casual. Hell, they're not even a weeaboo. They're a real otaku. I, I think I understand now. Y you were never on anything in the first place. You're just a fucking idiot. Hey, that's not constructive criticism. That's a hate comment. You better not make a video on him. By the way, I hope you've noticed that I never once mentioned this person's worth being not valuable, so they clearly have some kind of like self-esteem issue or like superiority complex going on. Like at this point, I think this person is just getting mad about what they think about themselves rather than what I think about them. I wish I could get through to you, but I can already hear you laughing through your screen. Oh, never mind. He's not just a real otaku, but he's also a mind reader, apparently. Impressive. Besides the god-awful writing in that entire fucking letter that he wrote to you, which I believe is still fake, he's pretty much hit it on the fucking nail's head with that one because, I mean, you've been acting like a child and laughing at everything he's been saying, or he or she, not here to assume genders, this is the year 2018, whatever, there's only two genders, cuck. No problem. All I need is to get the idea across. Maybe then, even if not directly caused by this letter, you'll have a chance to self-reflect once someone has gotten across your impenetrable wall of bullshit. Self-reflect on what, exactly? I get that you want me to change my mind about something, but it's kind of difficult to when you constantly contradict yourself throughout this email and don't properly articulate what exactly you have against me. You call me an elitist, and then immediately call me a casual, and then immediately call me out for apparently dissing real otakus. Like, what am I to you? You want me to respect you as a real otaku, but you fail to explain how and why. Not to mention, you fail to explain what the fuck a real otaku is supposed to be. That's like telling off a chef in a restaurant to make better food. Like, you gotta be a little bit more concise than that, my dude. Let me finish by saying, to sum things up, that you are no better than the weeaboos, forcing your opinions that you claim as fact and logic down innocent children's throats. And just because you made it to Japan and have some Japanese in you does not excuse you. Hate to say it, but it kind of does. That's like saying, I want to learn how to cook Italian food, but I can't learn it from this Italian chef that lives in Italy and has Italian heritage in him. Look, I just, I just like food metaphors, all right? I'm hungry, shut up. I hate to toot my own horn here, but I think out of all the Anatubers that you speak of, I probably have the most amount of excuse to call those kinds of people out, considering I'm one of the few Anatubers who know the language have the heritage, and live in the country. Welcome to the new drinking game. Wherever the anime man says that he is from Japan or has Japanese heritage, I want you to take a shot. And yes, it has to be a very specific liquor. It has to be at least like moonshine or something because this right here is going to be very hard and difficult to you. And if you haven't, if you haven't already been taking shots at this point, you have to go back through this video or go back through the, the linked one, and you have to start all the way over. And I'm sorry if your kidneys and your liver are going to fail you through this one, but you got to make it through. Otherwise, you're not a real otaku. I don't claim my opinions as facts and logic. I present facts and logic as information and then base my opinions around those facts and logic. You might not see it in the final result, but I put quite a bit of effort into researching these kinds of videos to make sure that I am presenting correct information. Womp womp. If you do not stop now, people will believe your way's law and begin ostracizing people as you all see fit even more than you already do. If all it takes is you misguiding the contents of my videos to feel completely ostracized from Japan and its culture, then I hate to say it, but you probably didn't want to be part of that culture as much as you initially thought. Alright, I'm sure this email is already a massive headache for a lot of you that you need to get medicine for afterwards, but let's see how this person concludes their constructive criticism in this epic closing statement. And after all this, why are you still on YouTube? What pleasure do you get from misleading everyone? Or do you truly believe you are being logical in your disapproval of everyone who doesn't follow your thinking? I know why. You truly are a troll, only doing things because you feel like it and not considering the consequences of your actions. You act like an absolute fucking neckbeard, but are excused because people before you have already convinced others to stand in line upon penalty of being called cringy and being shamed on the internet. Let's just love it when you're called a troll from an even bigger troll. Oh, excuse me, real otaku? Let's assume for a moment, Joey, that this person is a real otaku 
actually scratch that. Let's assume that they are a troll, much like yourself. I mean, do either of you need to be on the internet at this point? I mean, you're both irresponsible and you're both childlike. I mean, there's no reason for this video to even exist at this point. You're calling out someone that obviously wrote a stupid email. I get hate comments or constructive criticisms all the time. And there's nothing I can really do about them other than reply to their comment with, sorry you didn't like my content. I mean, there's nothing I can really do other than improve on the next video, which this one is an awful video. It's really shit tier. Like I didn't really plan ahead to make this video with any substance and there's nothing I can really do to disprove any points that you have. But I mean, that's the whole point of this because everything is pretty much subjective until the point that you start strawmanning your entire situation with this email. I mean, come on. Joey, I know that you're smarter than this, and this is almost as bad as that time that you self-censored yourself when you took down your video in response to another person that responded to you with their video because that didn't meet up with their exact specifications on what a YouTuber should be like. So, I mean, if you don't meet the biases of someone, who cares? That's not what YouTube is about. It's about making the content that you want to create first. And even if someone says that they want something that way, you should make it your way. But in your case, it's whatever you can make the money out of, then sure, go ahead. Because you're a corporate shill after all. Go ahead and make those hard-earned bucks just stomping on the fingers of others. YouTube itself isn't so bad because you don't have to worry about hate comments all the time. I mean, there are some nice comments in there. I mean, sometimes there are, and you just have to really look for them. It's 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 a it's a journey. I will say that. And I'm happy that a lot of people come to my videos. I'd like to think that I'm spreading valuable information to people who want to know it, but if you personally don't see any value in the contents of my videos, then I'm sorry. If you want just hard, straight facts with no opinions attached to it, then I don't know. Go read a fucking Wikipedia article. I heard those were pretty factual. You disgust me and should just stop making videos while you still can. Please stop being an anime dictator like the rest of the community. An anime dictator like the rest of the community? Am I the only one that thinks that sentence sounds weird? Does that mean this person sent this email to every single person in the anime community who they think is a dictator. I, I have to applaud you, my dude, because that, that, that is some dedication. I don't expect anything less from a real otaku. You're so vocal and noticed. You can still turn around and be a channel of positive change, accepting everyone who is making steps forward instead of running backwards towards their rooms and acting like heroes of anime justice or whatever. Did this keyboard warrior just accuse me and my actions for creating more keyboard warriors in the community? All right. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm done. Uh, I think that's enough for today. Oh my god, thank you. Holy shit. I'm glad this video's over. It took me forever to make this. Like, an entire week and a half to make this entire video about how fucking whiny you are about hate comments. But I guess the overarching theme of this video is don't expect to have an all good time on the internet. Because there are some bad moments and bad things that are out there. People will hate you no matter what, without reason, and that's just the way that it is. And if you can't take that on the internet, then maybe it's just best that you stick to the Weenie Puff Juniors of the internet. You know, like maybe Roblox or something. But you're more than welcome to join my Discord and, you know, experience cancer in that way. And you're more than welcome to follow me on Twitter, where I, you know have anime titties everywhere because those are fun for everyone but i guess don't be an asshole <laughs>